While design thinking and design sprint have different approaches, they share similarities, especially that both encourages incremental innovation. They both promote iteration, prototyping, and testing to arrive at a viable solution based from actual customer feedback, of course. This is the reason why they both promote the philosophy of fail fast something that I actually even apply in my managerial or leadership principle. They do, however, need to be applied in different situations. As you are aware, while they have their similarities, they have their differences as well. And choosing the right methodology depends on the nature of the problem, the context, and the desired outcome. Design thinking and design sprint can both be used to drive innovation and create value for your target customers, and even internal stakeholders, right? Aside from what is already stated here as the key benefit, allow me to add more principle to contrast, right? For you to further understand and perhaps give you more clarity as to when to use design thinking or when to use design sprint. Design thinking first is best suited for solving complex and ambiguous problems especially if it requires a deeper understanding of your user needs, your target customers, right? If it's not clear for you, who are you doing the sprint or rather the, the innovation for? If there's no clear segmentation in your business. The science sprint, on the other hand, is best suited for solving specific and well-defined problems, right? If you already have some experts in your company that you can tap, Let's say you already have some tech expert or customer experts, meaning they have day-to-day -day interaction with your customers. Then, design sprint can best be applied in those situations, especially in terms of validating the ideas or the solution through prototyping. Ultimately, both methodologies can be powerful tools to solve design challenges for you to innovate, right? And choosing the right one actually can impact the success of a project. So you have to use it where it's supposed to be used, right? Whatever is the scenario you are in. As part of this debrief, however, I want to leave certain questions for you to answer. I want you to ask yourself or your stakeholders, what if you try to solve innovation challenges without a design sprint or a design thinking? What if you simply, let's say, do it how you've been doing it right now? How long is that going to take, right? How is that going to be for the morale of your team or your company? How is it going to turn out? Like what would be the usual outcome? Maybe the same project will take eight months long, right? And a lot more stress, a lot more money if you don't align things in the beginning, especially using design thinking or design sprint to understand your users or solve your problem, or maybe simply consider it and also try to make it clear in your head. Is there an opportunity cost not doing a design sprint or a design thinking? Without design sprint, are you going to be going in circles, debating and not making any progress for a long time, right? Especially at the start of your project while everyone's trying to figure out what they're doing. These are the questions I would like to leave to you and for you to answer for you to decide whether design sprint would be pretty helpful for you or not, or your business, or maybe even your company, right? Answer these questions. This will help you uh, have more clarity, either you, your business, your team, your manager, your company, right? Uh, whether it is something worth applying or not. To end, however, uh, for this slide, Use design thinking if you are trying to solve complex and ambiguous problem that will require a deep understanding of your customers. And if you're willing to explore different solutions, right? Because again, we promote the principle of fail fast. But use design sprint if you are solving a specific and well-defined problem, right? That we can simply address through rapid validation, rapid validation, or prototyping. Again, design sprint is a more focused approach. If you're valuing speed and efficiency, then definitely design sprint is for you. 
and it will only involve small cross-functional team, as I mentioned earlier, between 5 to 7, not less than 5, but definitely not more than 7. This is supposedly my last video for this e-learning module. However, I've promised earlier as part of our debrief, I will briefly discuss how and why we also apply Design Sprint to my personal startup business, Quantifying Pharmacy. Because I'm hoping also, the reason why I'm including this is I'm ho hoping perhaps it will give you an idea or further justification why it is imperative to apply a design methodology, either design sprint or design thinking, to solve or to use it as part of your problem-solving approach that will benefit either your business or you in your personal career.